Let's bring in now Fox Senior Judicial Analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, good to see you. Good morning. No doubt at this point that the nuclear option is on the table, but will it be triggered this week? Well, as you heard from uh, the clip you ran from Senator John McCain, who's been in the Senate for uh, three or four terms now, and Senator Mitch McConnell, they don't want to use the nuclear option. The nuclear option means changing a precedent, not a rule, a precedent. To change a rule takes 67 votes. They don't have that. To change a precedent, uh, a tradition, if you will, it only takes 51 votes. And so the tradition is that any senator can speak as long as he wants on any subject he wants. They want to remove from that tradition the ability of a senator to speak as long as he wants about a Supreme Court nominee. They've already removed that precedent for the right of a senator to speak about a trial court nominee or an appeals court nominee or a, uh, or a cabinet nominee. And the reason um, Senator McCain said you will damage the institution is Republicans could envision a day where a, a President Bernie Sanders wants to appoint a 40-year-old Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I'm making this up hypothetically. And they're in the minority, and they will want to use the filibuster to stop that. If they exercise the nuclear option this week, removing the tradition, the precedent from the Senate, they will bar themselves from using this in the future oh. when they are in the minority. Right, but isn't that that's the Hobbes' important. choice that they face. I know, but for McCain to use language like whoever is for the nuclear option is, quote, a stupid idiot. That's very strong, but, right. you know, he gets... But, I, but he, I mean, give me a break. He's a military it, guy, and he sometimes uses language like that. But if you don't... <laughs> Make sure that Gorsuch is seated on the Supreme Court. You give in to Chuck Schumer yes. and his ilk. And, and that is doing this. And that is equally dangerous. I want to mark. address why he's doing it because it's a head scratcher. We all know Senator Schumer. He's a smart guy, he's smart intellectually, he's smart politically. This is a lose lose for him. Unless he's trying to gin up his hard left base, his hard left big dollar uh, contributors. Gor uh, uh, Judge that's Gorsuch is going to be on the court but by the end of the week. But that's what he's doing. He's yeah. trying to well, gin up his mo the not, money. Right. Absolutely. Uh, the and to show that he is uniting in some way the Democratic Party. Because let's not forget, after Hillary Clinton lost the election, they were in shambles politically. And okay. they had that very yeah. contentious DNC um, chairman debate. But, but Harry yeah. Reid already used a nuclear option on lower courts. So for, uh, for right. Republicans to not use this option when the Democrats use it willy-nilly on other no on other nominations in lower courts, they would use it if they were in the same okay, position. Okay, but remember, it's crossing the Rubicon. Once they use this, they can't. Once they get rid of this tradition, they can't go back. But it's and already been. It. It's already. Been, they've already crossed the Rubicon. Harry Reid did for, it for, for not. You're right for non-Supreme Court nominees. I want to talk about this uh, yep. uh, filibuster that's going yeah, on now. Ahead, yeah. You know, Still there, are, there are filibusters and there are filibusters, but Senator Merkley said something, actually tweeted it from the floor during the filibuster, which I have never heard before. I'm pretty sure we have a full screen of it, and it's, it's very dangerous what he said. Here it is. Okay. Until FBI and Congress complete Russia investigation, confirming Donald Trump's lifetime appointment to SCOTUS is premature. Is he suggesting that Donald Trump is not in a position to nominate someone to the Supreme Court, that somehow he's not the true, lawful, constitutional, moral, elected president of the United States? You know, you can say whatever you want in a filibuster. People have read Dr. Zeus. People have read the phone book. But this kind of, att of an attack, a one-line attack on the legitimacy of the presidency of Donald Trump, I've not seen before. Do the Democrats stand for this? Well, actually, that has yes, become a mainstream did. argument among what liberal groups. They, 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 yes, they, no they want to impeach. Yeah. I mean, they want to stop his agenda. They, yeah. So this is consistent want. with what we have discovered this week that Susan Rice did in the waning days of the Obama administration in an effort to embarrass, humiliate, taunt, irritate, and ultimately undermine Donald Trump, the human being, as President of the United States. Let me tell you, he's a very tough guy and he's not going to be undermined, but they are doing their darndest to perpetrate this. Yeah. But this is the best nominee they could have. Gorsuch is one, of, and he's replacing Scalia, right? And so, I mean, not the Democrats. That's, right. that's, right. right. that's not the argument anymore. The argument is do the Republicans need to take extreme measures to make sure that he's seated? Okay. Because the, of the politics. And of what it. animates the Democrats so strongly, aside from ginning up the base, is their argument that this is, and I'm going to use their phrase, I obviously don't believe this, a stolen seat mm. because the Republicans refused to take hearings on and an up or down vote on Merrick Garland, a qualified nominee. All of us concede he's qualified, a Democrat 
a president nominated him, a qualified nominee, and the Republicans but wouldn't the, even but the, vote. But the Republicans, McConnell even said, if you nominate someone, we're not going to put it up for vote because the vote is going to be the election. And Hillary Clinton right. and the Democrats ran on the election saying, vote for us, for our Supreme Court right. nominees. So to say you have a stolen seat when they knew w there wasn't going to be a vote on, their, on President Obama's nominee, when they also knew and ran uh, the election <laughs> predicated on a Supreme Court nomination, you can't say it's a stolen seat. Except that it does gin up Democrats, that phrase. Everything you say is correct, Kevin, and I agree with it. But when the Democrats say to Democratic audiences, no. this thing they want to do with Scalia and Gorsuch is a stolen seat, the crowds yeah. go wild. And who, is gonna be, who are going to be the grown-ups and say, two wrongs don't make yeah. a right here. Let's, all, let's grow up and make sure that the Senate keeps its legacy. You, you Who's going to stand up and, funny, and be funny, the adults? A, a, a funny little <laughs> thing here that I don't think that Chuck Schumer, that Schumer the Democrats even know about, and because I've read so much of what Gor Judge Gorsuch has written, He's actually with them on some issues, mm. particularly Fourth Amendment and civil liberties issues. Right. They actually would prefer him yeah. on that to just. But they Scalia. don't want to give anything to Donald Trump. By the way, Correct. a word on Susan Rice: uh, the worst abuse of power uh, that you've seen ever. Or I mean, like, for, go back to go back to the IRS targeting scandal. Go back to the the, the disruption, destruction of evidence, and now this. The use of intelligence data, which is top secret classified for political purposes is a scandal and a tragedy worse than Watergate. And the more of this that comes out and the more the public knows, the more the public will see the campaign of President Obama and his colleagues to undermine the presidency of Donald Trump using the intelligence community as an instrument. And you have to ask one question. What did Obama know? Did Obama send Susan Wright to do this? The, the revelation of top secret information for political purposes, that's called a felony. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Judge Andrew Napolitano there.